So you want to get into planted tanks, but after buying your first few plants, they ain't looking so hot. Keep watching as I reveal five more things I wish I'd known before starting a planted aquarium, the Healthy Roots Edition. Hi, this is A Gamer's Wife, here with practical and proven tips to help busy aquarists like you. And when I first started dipping my toe into the aquascaping world, I went with your typical beginner plants, Java Fern, Anubius, and so on. Now, what do all of these have in common? They're rhizome plants that you can pretty much glue to a rock and treat like a piece of aquarium decor. Very hardy, don't need much light, hard to kill. But then I decided I wanted to get into the world of rooted plants. You know, stuff that actually needs soil or substrate to live in. That totally opened up my options to stem plants, carpeting plants, crypts, bulbs, you name it. I mean, we're talking level two stuff here, right? Ha! That also means I had to be prepared to face level two problems and outright failures. So come along with me as I reveal the top things I learned so far about growing healthy roots for healthy plants. Okay, first off, I learned that at plant farms, most aquarium plants are actually grown immersed with only their roots and substrate covered in water, rather than, you know, what I thought, the whole plant being grown submersed or completely underwater, right? The reason why they do this is because aquatic plants grow much bigger and faster when they have unlimited access to carbon dioxide from the air, and their leaves are also free of algae and snail eggs. However, when we take those immersed grown plants and plunge them into the water, their leaves go into shock and often melt off, leaving you to think that you bought a dud, so you just chuck it in the trash. No, don't touch that plant. Leave it in your tank. Cut off any dying, immersed grown leaves, and eventually the new submersed grown leaves will pop out, probably looking a little smaller and shorter than before. According to Aquarium Co-op, you're essentially paying for the big healthy roots, not the leaves. Now, once you've picked a spot for your new plant, don't move it. <laughs> Unlike rhizome plants where you can frequently redo your aquascape if you're like me, just by moving the stone or driftwood it's attached to, rooted plants need time to settle in and become, well, rooted. <laughs> Every time it gets uprooted, whether because you're rescaping or you accidentally bump into it while gravel vacuuming or you have a jerk of a fish who likes to dig, you're basically pushing the reset button for that plant and it has to get used to its surroundings all over again. And it's not gonna grow well until it feels nice and stable for a while. P.S. Plant weights can help keep your plants down until they grow more roots. So what's the best way to make a rooted plant feel nice and comfortable? Well, I'm not gonna get into a big debate about what the best kind of substrate is, but just remember, Regardless of what kind you choose, make sure you use enough of it. Some of you might be tempted to buy something really high quality and expensive, which may mean that you don't have enough funds to get a lot of it. Most planted tank sites recommend a total substrate depth of two to three inches or five to eight centimeters. That way your plants have enough room to grow deeper roots and not get uprooted at the slightest touch. Speaking of substrate selection, okay, I know I just said I didn't care what kind you bought. That being said, you gotta make sure the substrate particles aren't too big or too small. If you go too big and have the equivalent of mm, like small river rocks as your ground cover, the roots don't really have a lot of surface area to hold on. You know, too much gappage in between. And then if you go with a really fine sand, like the carob sea supernatural sand that Ray's Aquaria says she hates, there's hardly any space between the particles for the roots to grow in. That sand's gonna compact way too much in the water and then end up smothering the roots to death. So if you wanna go with sand, make sure at least that it's much coarser and larger in diameter. Okay, so you got your perfect substrate, you planted your rooted plants, and you pinky swear not to move them but they're still not thriving and staying rooted for some reason. What else can encourage really good root growth? Well, I just heard this tip from Aquarium Cop, a retail and online store that sells tons of plants. Now, remember in the beginning of the video where I talked about immersed versus submersed grown plants? 
Well, when Aquarium Co-op gets their shipments from the plant farms, they actually try to start the process of converting plants to submerse grown. And their secret sauce for encouraging roots to grow faster is using a combination of their own Easy Green all-in-one fertilizer and Sea Chem Flourish Advance. Now, what is this Flourish Advance? I've never heard of it before, but to be fair, Sea Chem sells like nine different kinds of fertilizers last I checked, so whatever. <laughs> But this one is described as a natural phytohormone supplement that, quote, dramatically stimulates the growth of both roots and shoots in aquatic plants. Hmm. The ingredients include potassium, phosphates, calcium, and magnesium. Some basic building blocks for plants. But yeah, I was having problems with plants staying rooted in my betta tank, and ever since I started adding this magical juice to my regular easy green dosing, boom, no more floating plants. It's too early to tell whether or not this definitively works for me, but Aquarium Co-op is buying this stuff by the gallons, so you can be sure they wouldn't be wasting their money if it wasn't worth it. If you want your planted tank tips to be included in the next 5 Things I Wish I Knew video, comment below with your best recommendations because I really loved reading them and learning from all of you. If you missed part 1 of the series, click here on the screen or in the description and take time to enjoy your aquariums.